Hey, hey, it's Bernadette. All right, today we are going to talk about the effects of negative self talk. And this is a big topic. So many people come to me with this issue, right? It affects everything. So we are going to cover that today. I'm going to give you some tips on how to what it takes to end negative self talk and flip yourself into a place where you have positive self-talk because if you want to succeed in life have healthy relationships create healthy boundaries have a good self-image and a strong self-worth you have to have positive self-talk and a lot of you end up having negative self-talk but it's not your fault so i want to talk to you about that okay so today we're going to cover that um, and I'm going to just give you like the four easiest steps to end negative self-talk. But first, let's identify what negative self-talk looks like, sounds like, and how it shows up in your life. Because when we're stuck in that place of a negative sort of narrative going off in our head, it's unconscious. It really is this conversation when things get uncomfortable, when you're pushed out of your comfort zone, when you're in a place where you're learning something new or you really want something and it seems like things aren't working out, relationships cause it, right? Like when we're in a friendship or a relationship, a partnership, mm -hmm. then our negative self-talk tends to go off. If you're having health issues, negative self-talk goes off. If you're having financial struggles, negative self-talk goes up. So you guys see, right? Like it's pervasive in all areas of life. And if you really want to, to be able to live a life where you're free from worry, free from guilt, free from stress and anxiety, you have to get the negative self-talk under control. You need to get it to stop. Um, so, so number one step to end negative self-talk is to identify and recognize where in your life it's getting triggered, okay? Like I said, we get all of these different things from um, things that have happened in the past. I've told you guys that in previous live streams. And we get stuck in a pattern of repeating small things and you don't even realize it's happening. So let me tell you um, a story, sort of what I've been through in my life because I wasn't always really confident. I didn't always have a strong sense of self-worth. I didn't always have um, like a belief that I could achieve things because I came from um, a fairly limited abusive background when I was a child and then I was raised in the Catholic Church lots of dogma lots of beliefs um, I definitely had a problem with all of them. Um, okay so because of that because of my background because of what I'd been through in life right? I had all of, and I was the youngest and birth order has something to do with it. All right. I want you guys to understand this, like your self talk, your beliefs about yourself actually has something to do with your birth order as well. Or if you're an only child has to do with your parents, your socioeconomic background, your culture, your nationality, all these things come into play. So I don't want you guys to think like if you have negative self-talk, it's all your fault. And I'm going to tell you a secret. A lot of successful people had negative self-talk. They had to address that, combat that, end it in order to achieve the things that they wanted to in life and it's not that hard you have to just identify and recognize where is my negative self-talk getting triggered so like i was saying when i was younger i had a fairly like low self-esteem and different things happened through life and and what ended up happening in my family really affected what i believed to be true about myself whether it was music or it was gymnastics or it was, you know, riding horses, <laughs> there was always something I was told about, you know, you're not as good as so-and-so and you're not as good as that. So I would compare myself constantly. Then you have, as I became a teenager, you know, you have the media and I grew up in the eighties, which was a great era, but during that time was when, you know, commercial advertising was really focused in on a woman's body and how it looked. Well, I did gymnastics, right? So I was constantly having to worry about my weight. And we were always told, you know, 
seemingly innocuous statements from our coaches that you've got to maintain a certain low weight. And then stuff came from my mother about if I put on a couple pounds, you need to lose weight. Look at all the other girls. They're skinnier than you, right? Became part of my normal self-talk. Constantly worried about my weight, constantly worried about how I looked, constantly comparing myself to other people. You guys know what I'm talking about? Then on top of that, grades from school compared to my brother and sister. How are they doing in school? How's Johnny next door doing in school? There's all of these comparisons and all of that builds to this self-talk that goes into your head when other people compare you and they're not doing it purposely, but when they begin to compare you to others, you begin to compare yourself and it all adds to the dialogue that is in your head and creates that negative self-talk. You guys following me so far? Can you recognize, can you recognize somewhere in your life, going back to your childhood, where these things were told to you that are now repeating in your head when something gets uncomfortable, when something's new, when you're wanting to achieve something or when you need something, right? Are you recognizing places within your life where, oh my God, yeah, I remember hearing that when I was four years old from my parents or when I was six years old from the teacher or when I was eight years old from the priest at church. Can you recognize it? Because that's the first step to ending negative self-talk. All right. Recognize and identify where did it come from? How long has it been there? When does it show up? Why does it show up? That's step one. Step two is becoming consciously aware of when it's affecting you now. When does it get triggered now? Is it when someone questions your ability? Is it when you're, maybe you don't have as much money in your bank account as you need to have? Is it when you forget to pay a bill? Is it, you know, that's the second part. Become consciously aware of when your negative self-talk kicks in, okay? It can be something small. Like, you know, you didn't understand something someone said and suddenly your self-talk saying something like, you're so stupid, you're not smart as everyone else, you should just keep your mouth shut. It can be an argument with somebody, right? All of these little things end up triggering the negative self-talk, the voice of the inner critic. All right, so the third thing you need to do is begin to create tools, learn tools, and change the way your brain is repeating things to you, talking to you. You need to change the narrative in your head using neuro, neuro pathways and reprogramming the, those neural pathways. It's very possible to change that negative self-talk to give you your power back. Okay. Tools like EFT are great. Meditation, journaling, um, even Ho'oponopono can be used. You can do, you know, healing energy work. But more importantly, you need to have a process that is going to take you through those the steps daily to get a hold of whatever this negative self-talk is and start to detach from it, begin to release the emotions tied to it because everything that your brain is feeding you with that negative self-talk has an emotional attachment and you need to be able to detach from the emotions and calm it down the more emotionally we are attached to something the more um, we tend to react unconsciously and then we beat ourselves up even for reacting so we want to be able to have tools that's going to take our emotional reactions down okay or our emotional attachments down other people's drama tends to suck us in, right? And within that place of drama, we give meaning. When something works, we give meaning. When something doesn't work, we give meaning. And suddenly we have this entire conversation going off in our head, sometimes to the point of creating so much stress, you can't sleep at night because you're so focused on what has happened, you know, what's going to happen. You lose that place of being in the moment and you can't rest, right? So it's super important that you end the self, the negative self-talk, okay? The last step is repetition. You have to be able to repeat programming in new talk, new positive beliefs, new sort of tools, using new tools 
to be able to clear away that negative self-talk once and for all. It takes 30 days to make a habit, it takes 30 days to break a habit, and that's minimum. Typically, if you really want to lock something in, you should do it for 40 days. When you repeat something, right, a process and flip your, your, the way your brain is processing for 40 days, not only have you learned something completely new, but you have rewired your brain completely. You are drying up the old neural pathways that talk negative to, to you, negatively to you within your mind, within your brain, and you're creating new neural pathways, ones that tell you, you know, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> doesn't matter where you came from of course you can do it because that's the only difference from those who have and those who have not right whether it's having love or having health or having success or having money that's the only difference is what the person says within their head I was not always the super confident person I was not always someone who took risks and was courageous and brave it took me a process of reprogramming my brain, of really getting in there and identifying what was triggering me into that negative self-talk. And I'm not gonna tell you guys that I never have negative self-talk, sometimes I do. <laughs> but I also have the process to immediately shift it, change it, and get out of it. And because of that, I live a really magical life. I'm able to flip out of that place, create, from the place of a positive self-talk, positive self-image, and attract things to me really easily. I was doing the other saying you mentioned, I was saying I'm getting better and better things are getting. Yeah, and just simple things like that, just simple little affirmative things like that, Kelly, work and help, right? They really do. If you want help with it, because the, <laughs> if you want the tools and you really want to, Stop and end your negative self-talk so that you can allow yourself to have better relationships, have more time, have a better self-image, attract things to you easily and effortlessly, jump into Soul Fast 30, okay? We repeat that every 30 days, and once you enroll, you're in it for life. And it's repetition and understanding of these concepts and knowing where am I getting triggered? How do I handle creating good boundaries? How do I detach from the drama of others? How do I recognize when my ego wants to hook me in and make me feel small and unimportant? Or when my ego wants to hook me in and make me blow up out of anger? Because when you blow up in anger, you end up with what's called an emotional hangover. You end up feeling if you're sensitive and loving and heart-based you end up feeling really bad and then you circle around that event and you lose sleep over that event i don't want you guys to suffer with any of these things but it's the first step in getting control of your life and being able to accomplish the things you want and have the things you want if you've noticed that you have like repeating sort of reactions to things or you're attracting the same kind of partners and you know you don't want to do that anymore this is where you start right address your negative self-talk address the voice of the inner critic and get into soul fast 30 all right i hope to see you guys there jump in today and get it moving don't wait anymore really like you get me for an entire 30 days and then you get to repeat it right? We get to go through it again and again and again. And sometimes it takes seeing this within yourself and shifting it and changing it. Sometimes it takes multiple times to really lock it in. But once you do and your mind has really grabbed onto it, you realize how much better you feel, how much more energy you have, how much more time you have, how your money is suddenly not only lasting but it's coming to you easier and you can begin to develop a better relationship with money it's amazing how good life gets so i hope to see you in there i will talk to you guys later have a great day